Manx Radio Saturday Live Lounge, supported by Villa Gaiety. For the latest Watson information, visit villagaiety.com. Uh, who have I got on the line then? Have I got all three of you, or just the one of you? Uh, or? Unfor- unfortunately, it's just me, Roy, the lead <laughs> singer. The most, import- the most important one. That's not unfortunate at all, Roy. You're the best uh, one. <laughs> Don't tell uh, yeah, them I said exactly. that. <laughs> exactly. Well, hopefully that's been recorded. It yeah, has, actually. Before. How are you, anyway? It- I'm I'm really good actually. So we're halfway through the tour. We're having the best time. So yeah, it's a really good time to catch us. Oh, I'm glad you could speak to us. It sounds like you've got like an aviary behind you or something. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, literally, I have. I just I mean, we're playing Bury St Edmunds tonight, and I've gone. Pete, the drummer, said you've got to go and check out the cathedral. The grounds are amazing. And so I've just turned around the corner and I'm now actually at an aviary. I've <laughs> I, been there and it is it's, amazing. It's ridiculous. There's the cathedral here, which is enormous, like cathedral size. And then in the grounds was like the old monastery, which is four times the size of the cathedral. It's all ruins now. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, this is kind of what being on tour is like. I literally get to go to these beautiful places during the day. And then have a really fun show in the evening. It's just, yeah, it really is a, a lovely way of earning a living. Isn't it, Ace? I love that you do that. I take it, I know obviously you've been here before anyway, but does that mean that you're going to get a chance to have a, a wander around the island when you come back as well? Yeah, definitely. That's uh, that's definitely on my list. I actually saw there's an aviation and military museum, which I haven't been to, on the island. And that's sort of like two of my... Uh, my biggest interest so I think I'm going to try and get there and just have a little you've got we've got the whole day so I'm really looking forward to having a look around because last time we came we had no time at all so uh yeah I'm really looking forward oh I to really it. hope you get a good weather I mean I've got to say you're brave coming back at this time of year because I mean great British weather Irish sea you know what it's like but it, it'll be fine we're flying <laughs> there's no way I'm getting the boat <laughs> You've October. learned. You've absolutely, <laughs> yes. you know, getting a really good insight into what it's like uh, for scouting for girls nowadays. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah. that's so rock and roll. I'm in a cathedral and I can't wait to get to the aviation museum. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. well, you know, this is who we are these days. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's like literally just a big sort of jolly day out for us. Oh, yeah live show thrown in but no it should be really fun in fact we've always had really somebody reminded me we played the first time we played Isle of Man was in 2010 at the Villa Maria and it's still one of those you know we've done nearly 2,000 shows now Wow! but that's still one of my standout shows from that part you know from that part of our journey and so it's gonna be really fun coming back on Sunday and uh, you know seeing some old fans and playing all our big songs again it's always such a you know, it's all we've always had such great, uh, great crowds there. Oh yeah, do you know what? We are proud of our crowds. Carefully you call old though. <laughs> <Just saying. Yeah. laughs> well, we're really yeah, looking yeah. forward to having you back. It's going to be brilliant. And you know, I think is, is next year your twentieth. I was looking up and thinking, you know, when did you actually get together? It, on one of the sites it says two thousand and five. So does next year make it your twentieth anniversary? Is it, well, it's really hard. We sort of say our twentieth anniversary is going to be in twenty twenty seven. Okay. Because two thousand and seven is when we got a record deal, and we released you know, She's So Lovely and Elvis Ain't Dead and Heartbeat and the first album. So that's kind of what we've always said is our anniversary. But we've, uh, me and Pete, we met when we were five years old. He's on the drums. And me and Greg met when we were 11 at the first day of school. And we started playing music when we were about 12 or 13. And we took another 14 years to get a record deal. So it's like you could say our anniversary is every day of the year, the amount of times we've done that our first shows because we were playing music together for like 10 years before we got a record deal so yeah we're we're holding off 2027 is going to be the big 20th anniversary so uh I think until then we're, we're still we're still younger than the fly and busted. And that's what we're sticking with. <laughs> and we're holding on to that. Well, I exactly. love that. I love that. And it, I'm, I'm intrigued to know that when you were that little, did you always want to be pop stars? Is this like you have absolutely fulfilled your dreams? Absolutely. That was it pretty much from about the age of 13. So Greg, me and Greg were at school together and we were l- probably the uncoolest kids in the entire school. And I remember we used to hang out in a place called the Quiet Green 
which gives you an idea of how cool we were. <laughs> we, we weren't playing football. We were hanging out in the quiet green. And this drum kit was taken through the quiet green to the music room. And we saw that, that drum kit. And we immediately signed up for drum lessons, thinking this could be our chance to maybe one day get a girlfriend or at least <laughs> do something slightly cool. And so we, we signed up for drum lessons. And then that I, start, I found an acoustic guitar and I made Greg buy an acoustic guitar. And we started a band very quickly after that. And that was it. It was, you know, and it was the 90s. And so you had Blur and Oasis doing all their big things. And we became obsessed with that Britpop music and made it our life's mission to try and you know, just make music for a living was always the dream. And, you know, it actually took a long time from that, from those 13 year old boys, it took like another 14 years before we got, we managed to do that. And then since then, we've just been holding on for dear life. <laughs> Never letting go of it. <laughs> oh, don't, well, hey, it's still going brilliantly. I mean, you're selling out venues left, right and centre this tour, aren't you? It's This tour is pretty much, so I think there's a handful of tickets left at the Isle of Man. But we've sold more tickets for this tour than any tour we've ever done in our in our entire career. So feels like we've you know, we've getting you know, the crowd is just as young as it used to be. We're getting a new generation of fans and we're holding on to the ones who found us back in two thousand and seven along the way. So yeah, we you know, we we supremely grateful and just enjoying every moment. Of it. Oh, I'm sort of picturing little Roy, Greg, and Pete now, kind of looking up, <laughs> looking up at you lot, going, "We did it!" <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I suppose there is that to it, and I think you know we are quite. One of the best things about being in this band is that they're my best friends, and that you know my job, as it were, I just weird to call it a job, is to go around the country making music, connecting with people, making people happy with my oldest friends. You know, it is a really beautiful thing that I get to do. So, you know, we don't take it for granted at all. And, you know, and it means that these live shows, we put everything into it. Every mm -hmm. show is like a new event. And it doesn't matter where we're playing in the world, you know, whether it's Glastonbury, you know, Glastonbury Pyramid stage or Bury St. Edmunds, the Apex. It's the same as much love and, compa and passion into that live show and we always play the big songs it's a bit of a party and it's yeah it's just you know we're, we're, you can tell i'm just loving it i still oh, love it even it's now. so nice <laughs> i mean the joy's coming across it really is mm. and and well it does in the music as well because i mean it's just it's perfect positive pop really isn't it so you know you seem to have really got a knack for just making those immediate pop songs that just grab I, and they don't let go i'm gonna take that perfect positive pop <laughs> That's going to be on there. There'll be a T-shirt with that on there. The three P's. Scattered oh, my girls. God, Perfect I've made it. Pop. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. That's, but that, that, honestly, that is sometimes when I sit down to write music, you know, I think I do feel that not as a responsibility, but it's one of the things which I do think, you know, when you're trying to put something out in the world, it's like, how can you put out something that makes the world better? Mm -hmm. You know, even in a small way. So if you write a song that connects with people and makes them feel better is that is kind of like my life's goal now really like looking forward is to just sort of try and you know make people's lives better in whatever way I can and that's perfect positive pop is it maybe that's the title of the next album oh my god if it is I want a credit no I'm only joking okay <laughs> you have a credit just don't ask for any money oh no I don't care about that <laughs> just want just want my name on an album somewhere that would, that, that would be like little Christy then looking up going uh, you did it <laughs> perfect positive pop. I can even see like the that it would work really well in like sort of modern uh, like a modern font, perfect positive pop. Yeah. yeah I love that. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Well, listen, I'm intrigued because it is the three of you. And as you said, you know, you've been friends since you were tiny, tiny people. Um, what's yeah. it like then on the tour bus when you guys are going around? Does it, is it always like this kind of easy and, and fun and joyous? Or are you quite quiet now on the tour bus? What's it like? Uh, so, it, yeah, it's, I was actually just speaking to my agent beforehand. And I said, this is one of the nicest tours. Like, all the crew who we have with us. So there's about 10 to 14 people with us traveling, you know, doing various things, including the band. And, and we just have known each other for such a long time. It's a really lovely relationship. Everyone gets on. We are a bit older now. They were, we were, we were quite well known as being probably the not badly behaved, but we did love a drink. 
Right. <laughs> Go, girls. And we were quite well known for being the party problem band at a festival sometimes <laughs> not not that we, we'd always do the show but like if we were on early at a festival we'd be the ones still there at the after show party at like two in the morning and being asked to leave but that's calmed down a lot in recent years you know this morning i think i went to a gym and there were four people from our touring party in that gym as well so it's, it's a bit more wellness now but it's all <laughs> It's all good vibes. Good vibes and early nights. I it think, sort probably. of feels like the industry's gone a bit that way, though, doesn't it? I, it's so true. Well, I think maybe even like, you know, I think I think everybody's going that way a bit now, isn't it? I think sort of, you know, wellness is sort of sweeping the nation in terms of everyone's a bit more focused on what they eat and exercise. And, you know, I, but I do think the industry is definitely lost a little bit of its rock and roll edge there are still some ba- bands out there flying that banner but uh it's uh there are fewer and fewer of them so uh good luck to them good luck yeah. to them. that's that's it that's a young man's game that is i <laughs> shush you're still young stop it man you're still young yeah. so i mean do you, do you find it kind of a i mean you, you talk about the fact that you kind of find it almost like a responsibility to to bring joy and sort of make people feel a bit better does, does it make it more difficult then to write music with, when you're sort of putting that weight on yourself because it feels like with them being so kind of immediate the songs it feels like they just kind of they must just land on you, but it, you must graft them then if, you, if, you, if you've got that mission in mind. I do. I try. I, you can tell, like, you know, I am a very upbeat. I'm very lucky. I'm a very positive, happy person. And I try and reflect that in the music. And, you know, sometimes I love writing a slow song. And, I'm, I, you know, and Greg and Pete are great because they're, they'll listen to it and they go, that is lovely, Roy, but I don't really think that's a Scout for Girls song. And I'm like, yeah, probably. And there are a couple of songs on the album which I insisted on the new album that we had on. And I think on reflection, maybe they're not quite as Scouting for Girls <laughs> as some of the songs. But there is, I do think there is, I love really breezy, happy music. It makes me happy. It makes me run faster. It makes me smile. And to try and do that. And also, there's very few artists. When you're when you're trying to, because I do a lot of songwriting for other artists and newer artists coming mm-hmm. through. When you're trying to come through like that, you've, you've got to keep an air of cool and credibility and mystique. And you can't just be, hi, I'm really happy. <laughs> and with Scouting for Girls, I can. I can just be like, it gives me a real license to just write the happiest music possible. So... I, I try and lean into that, but I, it's never it's never a chore to write music. It just comes. It's uh, what I do really now. It's writing songs. Uh, the chore is like once you've written it, is recording it and producing it. That's the thing that takes the time and and all the effort. Yeah, because it can uh, become but, like an entirely different song once it's been through the studio, can't it? Totally, totally. You know, a song which starts off, you know, as it, generally what happens. <laughs> depressingly is you write a song in fact in fact it happens pretty much every song I write I start writing a song and I think this is probably the best song that anybody's ever written (laughs) it's not only the best song I've ever written it's the best song that anybody's written and then you start recording it and you're like going well it's probably not the best song anybody's written but it's probably one of our best songs and then you keep get down you go well it's definitely a song it's definitely a song (laughs) and then it's only when you get to the end and you're just going, yep, just another song. But it's the ones that come through that process where you're like, oh, my God, that is, you know, when it's gone through that process. And I think, you know, we only release new music. We, we release a new song every year or so, but a new album every three or four years. And that just gives you a bit of quality control. So yeah. you can go back and go, yeah, you know, because there's so many songs out there in the world. You know, why do you why do you want? your fans to listen to another song unless it's brilliant you know and so we work quite hard on that quality control it is it does feel like that nowadays doesn't it that you know an artist will put a single out and then two weeks later they're putting another single out and two weeks later another one what's that all about i don't know it's i think there's a real drive to feed the social media algorithm and people are scared that if you're not always there working putting stuff on socials that people are going to forget about you. And I think it always has to come down to how good your song is. And I always mm-hmm. think when I work with new artists, it's like, before you put, you know, obviously do your 
do your thing, get on socials and that. But before you put anything up there, make sure that you've got an absolutely belting song. And that may take you two years to write that incredible song. You know, and then once you've got that song, you've got to write two more just as good as that. And that's when you start working because, and then you keep feeding that song because sometimes songs these days can take months and months to break, you know. And, you know, if you're just constantly putting out, you know, 10 quite good songs, you're much better off just putting one amazing song out and going away than putting 10 quite good songs, you know. It's because it's just, you know, I thought I heard somewhere there's like, a hundred thousand songs being released every week no. or something bonkers like that so it's very hard to like you know keep people interested these days so well, i've got to say as well know. on that note too i mean i suppose it because obviously it's scouting for girls you've got a very definite sound and we know it's you which is what we love about it yeah. but then it's got that's a heck of a talent then to then turn around and go into a studio and write for someone else kind of trying to get their voice into it is that is it tricky to yeah. kind of switch like that it's not I kind of go at it from sort of almost like a producer level. So I'm I kind of look, oversee it. And the best way, the most successful I am at doing that is when you've got an artist who's already got a very strong idea of who they are mm. and the songs they want to write. And so then it's more like honing the melodies and the production and maybe the structure of the song to make that song as you know as hooky as possible or as you know as as catchy as possible, adding a few little bits here and there and making it flow like a song and giving them like, you know, what, you know, the 20 years of experience that I've had at writing songs and putting that into the song, but then taking their brilliance, their, their edge. And that's the best way. Otherwise, you know, it may as well just be a scout for girls song, but it, it's so, it, the problem with songwriting is, you know, I've been doing it for like 25, 30 years. And as soon as I think, I've worked out some sort of formula. It gets blown out of the water the next time, the next writing session I do, and I work with someone else, and I'm like, oh my god, that's ex- all the rules which I had. I've broken them all, and it's a much better song. That's <laughs> you know? so, so funny because the next question I was going to have was, you just led me into that because I was going to say, is there a formula for? But obviously not. Then no, no. Every time I think there's a formula or a way, even when I, you know, I get to a point where I do lots of writing sessions, I'm like, oh God, I hate writing sessions. I don't want to write with anyone. Then I'll do the next writing session. We'll write an amazing song, you know? And every time I think, I think you just got to be open to to everything, you know, creatively when you're writing. And, and the one thing I was talking to a new songwriter last week who comes see us and they just signed a record deal. And I was like, when you go do lots of these writing sessions, most important thing is you have to love it. It doesn't matter about anybody else. It doesn't matter about your A&R man or the audience or radio. You have to love it. You have to seriously love that song like it's the, the best thing you've ever done. Because if you don't love it, what is the point? What is the point? You know, you've got to do it that you love it so much that you want other people to hear it. And that's that's what true artists do. And that's where all those big, you know, not all the big songs, some of them are churned out but like for the artists we all love and you know we really connect with it's they they've written a song that they adore and they love and that's what you know that's how you really make a song because then even if even if it is you know it doesn't connect commercially you've still created something that you love and at the end of the day that's that's the most important thing yeah, because in, in 20 years, you can look back and go, I did that and I'm proud of it, which is clearly what you're totally. doing, which is awesome. I yeah. mean, who do, who do you admire now then? Who do you think's brilliant that is quite new to the scene? Who am I enjoying? Uh, who am I loving right now? I love I love Maisie Peters. I love mm-hmm. a lot of, like, uh, and Sigrid. They, well, they're kind of like an album or so in. I love, they're, they're sort of doing that sort of pop uh songwritery stuff i love mm-hmm. the lottery winners oh yeah they're very like good a, yeah they're one of the best live bands out there at the moment uh there is who else am i loving i'm loving like another indie rock band band called wonder horse who are like they're, they're like completely different they're like really indie 90s almost grungy sounding and like oh, they don't do any social media and their songs are just amazing. Their live shows are incendiary. I think they're the best live band out at the right, moment. I'm writing that so, down. Wonder Horse, brilliant. Yeah, Wonder Horse. And uh, The Last Dinner Party. Oh, I yeah. love them. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. 
So the, and that's the thing. Uh, the, certainly, last dinner party. I, I said I don't know Wonder Hus, but the others as well. They are writing pop, but like last dinner party, at some point, sound like Sparks. So like you've got kind of like yeah. references from back in the day, but also sounding completely fresh, haven't you? Yeah, and you know, and I think that's a great because they, you know, they've got this massive, you know, nothing matters. This awesome pop song, mm-hmm. but they've got like this real artistic edge to them. You know, like Kate Bush, Sparks. I love yes. that and. You know, and amazing album, and they're just doing what they love. You watch them on stage, and they're so fun, and they're just in the moment, and 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 it's so fresh, and it's like, you know, that's what people are crying out for. And I, yeah, I, they, they were one of my favourite acts from last summer, which I saw a couple of times. So. Oh, you see, I was meant to yeah. see them in Sheffield last week, and I couldn't go, and now I'm gutted. <laughs> Never mind. Oh yeah, yeah, they look amazing. Yeah, yeah. they are amazing live. I I saw them at Glastonbury, and the field was so busy. Me and Pete were like quite edged out at the edge, so we could barely see them. But uh, I, I'm guessing that yeah. sort of fuels you, though, as well, because when you're around excellent bands, excellent artists, when you kind of get to see them, when you get to work with them, it sort of inspires you to carry on. I'm guessing, doesn't it? Oh my God, yeah. And I feel, you know, because the barrier to entry with music is so low now. As in, like, you if you've got a laptop, you can start producing music yourself, and there was just so much amazing music around mm-hmm. at the moment. And so, you know, from a competitive point of view, it keeps you on your toes, but also it inspires you. And I love music. I love music more now than I ever did when I was a kid. And I was obsessed as a kid. And I, I love everything about it. I love being in a band. I love writing in the production. I love being on tour, you know. And the fact that there's all this new music coming out now that still gets me as excited, that gets me wanting to sit down with an acoustic guitar and write a new song. It's just, it's just amazing. You know, I, I, you know I, it's, it's, I feel so lucky because I'm still, somebody, somebody said to me, when was it the other day? They were like, what interests do you have? And I was like, music, pretty much it. <laughs> oh, I might, I might pop to the odd aviation. Yeah, museum. I was going to say, yeah. Don't <laughs> forget about museum. the planes. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably have my AirPods on listening to some music at the time. Oh, uh, that's yeah. brilliant. Well, listen, I'm, I'm going to have to irritatingly vacate the studio, which is a shame because I could talk yeah. to you for blooming hours. I really could. But I should ask that. I mean, we've kind of got a flavour anyway, but but what can we expect from your, your return visit to the island then? What, what should return. people be looking forward to? Uh, well, we'll be doing a few songs from the new album, which came out last year. Mm-hmm. We're doing our favourite ones. We'll be shooting the video. We're shooting the video for the last single from that album. So if you're in the crowd, you may, you'll may you probably end up in the actual video for the single at the end of the year. So do your uh, hair. And then, yeah, do your hair. And yeah, and just all the big songs, all the scamping us songs. There's, there's, you know, there's a couple of surprises in there, but if there's a song you love and it's one of the big scamping us songs, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to hear it. Aww. So it's a big party. So, you know, do some vocal warm-ups before you come in because by the end of the night, you're not going to be able to talk properly. So uh, Well, we love yeah, singing but... back at bands. So, yeah, we'll be, we'll okay, be there perfect. with our best voices on, I'm sure. Uh, do, you, have you, do you know if you've got a support? Because I know sometimes you've had local supports. Do you know? We have, yeah. We've got two support acts who've been on the road with us all year. Callum Beatty. Oh, he's brilliant. Scottish... Yeah. Oh, but there you go. He's incredible. And then before him is Vince Freeman, who's got another... It's quite embarrassing, actually, because both support acts have much have a much better voice than I do, which is quite depressing. <laughs> so, like, Vince has got this ridiculous voice. He was... He was uh, a featured... I think he was on The Voice a couple of years ago, and he's a featured artist on a a huge dance record and so he's brilliant as well he's opening the show Callum's on just before us and then then we come on and uh, uh and do our thing so it's yeah it's a great it's a great night actually it's worth getting there early having a few drinks enjoy those guys and then uh, then have a dance and a sing along with us oh uh, well we can't wait for you to bring your perfect positive pot back to the Isle of Man there you go I'm gonna keep saying that <laughs> yeah. now <laughs> yeah, keep doing don't that. forget keep doing it Roy that. don't yeah. forget it I won't. I won't I'm writing it down right now oh, yeah. do you know what it's an absolute joy chatting with you like a spring of spaniel I love it you're just full of full of energy and full of full of just joy it's just wonderful well listen we can't wait to have you back I know it's going to be an awesome night we will be singing and dancing and thoroughly enjoying having scouting for girls back uh, so do make sure you get your tickets now and Roy thank you so much for taking much more time than I asked for from you it's been a real pleasure oh my god it's been a pleasure thank you so much <laughs> thank you see you on Sunday absolutely take care all the best safe travels thanks bye bye bye
Manx Radio Saturday Live Lounge, supported by Villa Gaiety. For the latest Watson information, visit villagaiety.com.